Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours. I am your host, Jinx, and we are, as always, joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. I'm going to go ahead and start off today with a shade on here yet. No? Okay. No. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah, there I see you. <laughs> I was looking, but uh, your, your face was blended in, apparently. Uh, do you want to give us some updates uh, from the protocol side? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so last week was uh, obviously ETH Denver. Um, so that was great. A lot of uh, uh, folks from uh, both Grove and PNF uh, were there. And so it was great to uh, kind of connect and have some FaceTime. Um, uh, getting back uh, yesterday, we uh, they kind of uh, scheduled out what the next uh, couple iterations are going to be, uh, which an iteration is two weeks. And so uh, they're taking two weeks right now to uh, kind of tighten up everything that is needed to then launch the uh, uh, NVT, as we're calling it, minimal viable testnet. Um, uh, and we plan to publicly launch that uh, in basically uh, in the next iteration. So two weeks for this current iteration to get everything lined up. And then after that is when we plan to have the, the publicly available test net. Beautiful. That's very exciting. Can't wait to uh, push that, that news out there and get the ball rolling. Indeed. Um, Zach adds, do you all have anything else you want to add from a community or marketing perspective? You want to go first, ads? Yep. Happy, happy the way. Um, so from a marketing standpoint, I'm just putting together an updated calendar for the next the next couple of months. Um, and actually trying to chart out some of the big milestones that we've got coming over the next five to six months as we kind of really think through how we how we build up that drumbeat of excitement in the the run up to Shannon um so there were some really good conversations had during ETH Denver the the event was very successful um it was great kind of meeting lots of people IRL um a lot of positive sentiment towards the project actually awareness has definitely picked up a lot um you know we didn't we actually it was kind of surprising when you told somebody you work for Pocket Network and they didn't know what we did um, which is nice because it definitely didn't feel like that, um, certainly not as strongly. Back in Paris um, at ECC in July. So it feels like sentiment is picking up. It feels like credibility is building. Um, it's it's not obviously currently reflected in the price, so we're kind of just putting together the comms plan over the next four to five months to make sure that we kind of really build, build up that excitement um, as we get ready for mainnet launch. So more to follow. Um, unfortunately, nothing tangible to tell you today. Back, back over to you. And Zach? Yeah, same as ads. I, I feel like uh, she didn't toot her horn enough about the great event we had, but um, you know, Ethan Ver event was great. So I'm sure we'll get some takeaways from that. Uh, there were so many people there. It was a lot of fun. We have some video content coming out. Um, man, a lot of things happened last week. It's hard to like put it put it all into into one place but um we will have our community call next week where we'll talk about some of our takeaways from our offsite and going through denver having shane there was great um if you guys don't know shane is probably the best dm anybody's ever had uh for any <laughs> event uh being that he had his first one with us um but yeah we had a great week um on my end coming back this week has been a little bit slow thank you everybody for being patient um i think everybody got a little bit sick last week and recovering from that uh i am going through quick grants and other stuff um if anybody seems like they're missing anything please ping me it's possible it got lost last week and one thing i did notice today i was going through hedgy and there's a whole bunch of people who have quick grants who haven't gone in to claim any of their funds so um, i'm doing a round of messaging here but if anybody thinks they're missing funds you're probably just not looking for it in the right place uh, what else is there? Shane, I just messaged you. I, I don't know if we want to hold the builder's call tomorrow. Um, I don't know if you want to discuss that right now, but I did want to, maybe now's the time to say yes or no publicly. Yeah, uh, I, I think it would be best to postpone. Uh, the last one we did uh, two weeks ago, um, uh, well, more like a week and a half ago. Uh, yeah, uh, 
yeah, we went through some economic stuff, and this week I'm wanting to really kind of get things buttoned up uh, on that front, and so start releasing stuff potentially next week. So I think it'd be better to, uh, yeah, to, to postpone this one, because there wouldn't be a, a direct uh, new information I, we could provide right now. Great. So then um, we'll just, I'll, I'll go ahead and cancel those in Discord, but just know that tomorrow's uh, builder's call will be canceled, and we'll do that async if anybody has any questions. Um, I feel like I'm being a little long-winded because I'm scattered, but um, a whole bunch of cool stuff happened last week, and we're trying to get that on paper to present next week. So um, look forward to that. And if anything is missing from anybody at PNF, feel free to reping us. And uh, you know, thank you for your patience as we're like getting back online after uh, busy ten days. Beautiful, Fred. Gabby, anything on the uh, Grove side you want to uh, let the community know about? Um, if you saw my messages this morning, thanks to all the node runners who came out for Goerly and Goerly Archival. Um, we should expect an uptick there. I know that they're on end-of-life support from ETH. Uh, we had been hoping actually to deprecate them very shortly, but uh, somebody needs them in the, in the 11th hour here. So um, <laughs> there's relays to be had. Good luck uh, and enjoy. Um, beyond that, uh, I don't think there's uh, anything major. Uh, we'll probably be bringing, uh, you can keep be on the lookout for some RFPs for new chains in the near future. Um, and other than that, I think we're just, we're building, we're building away. Uh, just to add, we're ramping up uh, demand support for Celestia Archival. So if you're running some nodes, thank you. Uh, we will do our best to bring in some relays for you. One thing Absolutely. to know, we do need to be aware of adding new chains right now with the with the chain, uh, with with the block space issue we're already having with the chain. So every time we would add more um, more chains, that's that's filling up more block space. So uh, yeah, we we definitely need to coordinate on what what chains are being added. Um, I'm not sure. I I. I, I'm not involved, you know, with with every conversation, but that's something that we do need to take very seriously. Jane, in your opinion, which has a bigger bigger impact on on block space size, uh, uh, more gateways or more chains? Well, both of them result in the same uh, the same uh, because w with both of them, you're adding more sessions. Uh, you app sessions to the chain. So if you're adding an if you're adding a new chain, then that's adding new app sessions for the app stakes that are staked on that chain. If you're adding a new gateway, it's likely adding a lot more uh, a lot more app sessions because now they have to have app sessions in a lot of chains. So uh, that would have a greater impact. But both of them are still adding app sessions to the chain. So, uh, you know, right now we're basically at capacity. And from my understanding there, we've, we, yeah, we're, we're maxing out our blocks as blocks right now. Uh, I believe I saw that there was a transaction that, you know, wasn't able to go through because they're, uh, a, the block size was too, too full. So, um, so both are equally, um, or, or not equally, but both add space, uh, and we're at the point now where we can't add any more space at all. So any app stakes um, being added for even uh, adding one more new chain could just keep, yeah, might might hurt things even more, or would hurt things even more from my understanding. Is that something that there's a proposed solution for? I mean, if we're looking at, uh, you know, a hundred gateways or whatever that that seems like um almost a bigger concern than you know the adding of an additional chain here and there uh yeah i mean the proposed proposed solutions are being talked about in the forum there was kind of uh there's been a, a lull in the comms a bit just because the uh um because of eat denver but now that we're getting back uh yeah that that needs to definitely become a top priority um, ASAP. I think really what we need, uh, last I saw on the forum, what we need is we need some definitive information from Grove and Nodes on uh, 
uh, on their app stakes. And uh, I, I, I can't. Yeah, I haven't pushed back yet publicly, but I'll say it here. I don't think the data that is being requested is fair or even um, app stakes are allowed to be staked for up to 15 chains. Each chain generates a session of 24 nodes per app stake. We have been allotted n number of app stakes by the foundation. It is well within our purview to use them as they are. So 15 times 24 times whatever is the amount of stored necessary information on chain. Um, I think that this problem is an issue with block size. Our block size is actually 50x more efficient than Polygon. And so I think that we should just, in order to get us over the hump and into Shannon, I think that we should just increase the block size and double it again. Uh, that should unblock at least the existing gateways and possibly allow to add one to two more until we get to Shannon. Yeah, uh, I hear you. I uh, the thing is, is getting information. There shouldn't be any um, push against that in my mind. Uh, these app stakes are something that the uh, you know are technically owned by the foundation, and so uh, you know sharing information so that we can understand what's happening. Uh, is is not a is, the, is, the information uh, that's being a, a, a asked for is asking for Grove to expose its intellectual property. We are not going to release the intellectual in property that is involved in the interior workings of our proprietary quality of service measures. All that needs to be known is that we are we have at 260 app stakes that we actively use, and they are allowed to be staked for 15 chains. And each one of those can generate a session. So 260 times 15 is how much information we are allowed to yeah. use now. And that is the rules of the chain. If you don't like the rules of the chain, then we can revise them. Uh, let me just jump in here. Because there's, um, with regard to this problem, I've been seeing a lot of different solutions on the forum. There's basically, think about there's like 10 different levers that we can pull. They're all completely orthogonal to each other, and they can all solve the problem in different ways. For example, block size, for example, proof, for example, extra like data. Uh, this is something that's very, very important, but can also become a really big distraction from different scanners. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, I uh, am supposed to catch up from me Denver and everything else, but by the end of the week or early next week at the latest, We'll kind of put up the top three things that we can do, the top three levers we can pull, their trade off. Um, hopefully, they'll get literally the entire ecosystem on the same page, and, and then we'll put it up for a vote. Uh, and I think that, like, for, like Fred said, and that should be good enough to get us through to Scanner, uh, whatever solution we end up going with. And for anyone curious, probabilistic proof, which is Part of the canon design and something that Vermeer and I put together is the long term solution to this that will have no limits in scale, you know, whatsoever. So, kind of in terms of the next step, just uh, look out for comments in the forum. We'll make the trade off really, really clear, and we're going to push the solution as fast as possible. I also will echo just one more time. I've said this before, and I will continue to say it. The amount of nodes that we use in a session is not spam. Every single relay that a gateway consumes is paid for and burned for. They are 100% legitimate relays. We are users of the protocol, and we are using the protocol according to its specification and how it is supposed to be used. Yeah. Uh, ben Van, please. I mean, that's, that's fine for you to look at it that way. Um, what this really sounds like is that we've got trusted gateways out here who are just flat out refusing to, to talk about any solution other than the one you want. This feels to me like the network has adversarial gateways on it. Okay. I, okay, so there are multiple solutions here. I think expanding the block size is valid. I also think that you could reduce the number of staked chains per app, but that also affects you all as node runners and causes you 
to reduce the number of stakes that you're allowed per pocket node. So I'm trying to find a solution that is minimally impactful on all of us and doesn't mess up the current status quo so that we can get over the hump into Shannon where this entire conversation is completely moot. Reduce the number of nodes per session is the obvious, quickest fix. I've explained, though, Ben Van, that even if you do that, we require a certain level of d node diversity in order to guarantee quality of service that causes people to use our gateway. And so the obvious counter solution to that that we're going to pursue is we're going to invoke more app stakes to get more nodes in each session. So you're you giving just yourself permission. Problem. You're giving yourself permission to invoke more app stakes. We actually hold over a thousand app stakes. We only actively use two hundred and sixty. So this problem is way larger than anyone's willing to admit. Like these app stakes have existed, and the only reason it's not worse and it hasn't popped up faster is because we've been extremely efficient in our utilization of those app stakes. There was a time when we had an agreement and a list of uh, guardrails for what the gateway would do because this was a problem that we were hitting years ago. Um, and now we're running up against those gateway numbers. The fact that you can make it even worse, I'm fully aware of that. You can kill the network with a, in a heartbeat. Okay. The issue is you're hurting the network now. When you say... I, guess I, mean, I fail to see what the hurt is other than the fact that the block size is becoming overcrowded. Like, how does this affect the tokenomics? How does this affect the price? And at the end of the day, like, I understand that it increases the storage requirements on you all, but pocket storage requirement is not exorbitantly large in comparison to any of the 50 plus chains that we currently support. So let me let me just jump in here, uh, Van Van. The information that you're asking for uh, from Grove's uh, point of view, uh, like Fred said, there's definitely proprietary information that we can't share. But the information that you asked for, uh, you know, how many apps we have and how they're being used, this is all public on-chain data. Uh, the issue is it's just not accessible uh, and not easy to interpret. So. Uh, you know, I'll take it on myself to, you know, go to pocket scan, get Ramirez help, and just make sure that that public information is more easily accessible and it's on the forum, whatever is proprietary, will say proprietary, but, you know, will, won't affect the actual bloke. Um, but I do kind of want to say, like, let's close, like, I think, I, I personally think it's worth closing the loop on this because there are different levers we can pull. On the forum, we are evaluating those trade-offs. And I think just like outlining it in a tabular written form for everyone to see in one place, it's kind of gonna really get everyone on the same page to a quick solution. Uh, so, so like my ask is like, whatever information you think you really need from us, like from uh, from Grove, post it. And I don't think it, you'll be asking for proprietary information. Uh, and then you know, with Pocket Scanner and Mirror, we'll be able to get that up there. How does that sound? Yeah, uh, on my side, I think that sounds great. Yeah, um, it's just a matter of just sharing the information that uh, is helpful to diagnose this. Um, so I appreciate the openness to yeah post post what is kind of needed to uh, you know help help get light on the forum so that we can really ultimately have a decision that's based off uh, based off data. And as Ben Van said, this is something that you know we've uh, dealt with before, um, and you know just having available information and having an open conversation is how we do that. So definitely appreciate that. If I can make one comment, please. The way I see it, uh, Grow is the largest customer of the uh, Pocket ecosystem. Yes, there's Spy, yes, there's other customers, Nodis, for example, but they are the largest. And if they are saying we need this or that for quality assurance, for you know, their customer satisfaction, I think we should listen to them. And you know, if we are assuming the analysis, that's something else. But I, I don't think that's the case at all. So because of that, I think we should take that as a customer input, paying customer input. That's I think it's valid. Thank you. 
Yeah, no, and 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 there's there's nothing wrong uh, with uh, with having these kind of discussions, and there's nothing wrong with uh, getting all of Grove's input because that's that's all valuable. So absolutely, nothing nothing wrong with that at all. Um, yeah, it, it's just a matter of uh, yeah having having the information that is super helpful to to address this. Um, and none of this is, you know, <laughs> we're we're not trying to. I, I don't believe anyone is trying to hurt anyone uh or you know screw anything up for our paying customers at all so um yeah so that, that that's definitely not an issue i don't think anyone's pushing to have that happen um i think this is more just about yeah having the information that is helpful for diagnosing this i appreciate Oshansky uh uh with because we talked about this we did talk about this over uh at eat denver and so I think he's kind of pulling some of the information all together that would help us be able to present something. Hey, this is the right way to do this. So yeah, we're, so this isn't not working with growth. Like this is all working together. So definitely a hot topic of conversation. Um, Ian, I've seen you in the, the comments here. I'm following what you're saying there, but can you talk about it's a hidden form of deflation taken out of the smallest stakers? Can you explain that, please? If you spam a bunch of low volume relay sessions to where the relays literally only pay for the transaction fees, those who have stake nodes get screwed completely. Um, so basically, are you just saying that like a lower total relay count per block? Sorry if my questions sound dumb. I'm just trying to wrap, make sure I understand what you're saying. We need real-time Jeopardy music when people are typing in chat. Okay, so just an issue of how much of the resources are used per session. Fred, do you think that, you know, given what we've heard so far, do you think that there is you know, a potential for some level of optimization, you know, maybe not dropping to five nodes per session the way it used to be, but, you know, maybe some fallback testing point. I'm very hesitant to name a number. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that we use the total pool of nodes that are given to us across all sessions at any given time. And we rely on that node diversity to provide the quality of service that end users require. And, and that's really the trade-off. Like the, if you were to reduce that, the logical conclusion of that would be to invoke more app stakes that we currently have possession of. We actually have over a thousand, but we only use about 260 of them. Right. Um, to achieve the same node diversity, which is why I'm very hesitant to offer that as a solution because the second order effect is QoS go down, relays go down. Okay, in order to reinstate QoS, we just invoke more apps and then we're exactly where we started with that solution. So it, it just doesn't seem viable or reasonable. Do you think that given the, the changes to QoS monitoring you know, with watchers or fishermen or whatever we end up calling them, and Shannon will help reduce the the need for that level of diversity in, in QoS enforcement? Uh, I'm going to, if that assumption is what we move forward with, then maybe, 
my uh i don't think that that is a valid assumption i'm actually anti any form of on-chain qos but that is neither here nor there Oof. well <laughs> i may have to dig into your mindset uh, at another time not on this call around that I see that uh, Breezy and Ramiro are both typing, so watching for that. And it's definitely, a, you know, I, I can I can see that it's a, a complex conversation, and you know, respected node runners uh, uh, have, have you know added some qualified input here, and uh, I'm doing my best to try and grok the entire uh, scenario, but. Um, it doesn't sound like there's an easy and completely agreed on solution. So I'll be curious to see how these uh, conversations develop. Uh, Ramiro says that Shannon can probably solve this by other means like probabilistic proofs. Um, so keep solution proposals in Morse parameters. Breezy also thinks that dropping back in node count is uh, a strong approach. And yeah, Fred, I see it. Uh, I mean, QoS has been a major issue, right? And we've seen in the past that uh, we weren't able to close some bigger deals previously that we had in our pipelines specifically due to QoS issues. And the improvements in QoS have absolutely led to, um, you know, greater sales for the network in total, uh, which generally should be good for everyone. But just like when we had the the change from all full nodes or all validators to all full nodes to full nodes with light clients and and similar type setups, this looks like a place where there's a strong need for some optimization and tuning. I think node runners often, you know, like our our you carry a lot of weight in the network, right? It's uh, and sometimes that that leads to some adversarial positions, but. Um, I think node runners have been significantly adversely affected by price of the token. Uh, node runners are affected by um, things like uh, architectural uh, changes or, or things that lead to greater resource usage, which leads to greater cost and lower returns. Uh, that's certainly something that we have to try and navigate, especially as we talk about bringing on more and more gateways. And Fred says, my opinion is double the block size again to get us to Shannon, where this is a moot conversation. And we're 50x more efficient per block than Polygon, 300x more than Solana. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's not hard to be more efficient than Solana. Any other thoughts or questions or input there? Actually, it's, it's a good question if we can go up in the block size, because I, I believe that there is not a single solution that will enable us to have more than three gateways. Maybe we can make room for uh, the liquify gateway by setting one parameter up, but in order to have four, five, six more, <laughs> we will need to change more than one thing. So we need to to do this carefully and uh, but but I I don't think also this is such a big problem. I, and we we I think I'm confident that we will be able we will be able to fix this and make room for the those gateways that we need until Sh Shannon hits. So we should have need to decide where we will are going to pay the price because yes, there will be some kind of loss. If, for example, if we set the minimum proof up, some chains will appear to have less relays than that they should be have should be having. Some no runners will see less rewards per session, but in the end, the number the the relay to token multiplier will balance that reward. So. Um, it's not that dramatic, the solutions that we can implement, but we have to make a decision and, and we are going to get hit somewhere for changing the, the parameters. And finally, to what Ian is saying about the, 
the tax that we are paying for making the claims and proofs. I think he's right, and it will it will be happening because that's the price that you have to pay to make the proof and claim and claims. It, ha- it has nothing to do, I think, with uh, with how portals are managing the the sessions and and so on. Um, maybe if they build up better sessions, uh, I mean, uh, build up claim, claims with more relays, the effect is not so big, but we cannot control how gateways manage their apps. We need to build to be able to handle any kind of of behavior, even the round robbing that we are observing by some apps that will give you the worst relays to tax ratio that you could ever have. And I think that what Ian is saying is referring to those sessions from those apps that give you the, the least amount of relays per claim that you can have. So we need to build in order to make that not to be a problem. Uh, so well, that's my two cents on this. Yeah, totally agree um, that we need to build towards that. And that's, I, you know, that's what I respect about your work and uh, Oshansky's work with uh, working out probabilistic proofs where that, that does address it. So um, we are absolutely building towards that solution um, to where it's not going to be a problem. Uh, later on down the road uh y- yeah uh and as you know as everyone's mentioned there's there's a lot of different levers here so ultimately i think we uh i think all the forum is the best place to kind of hash that out because people can get their uh uh, uh thoughts kind of in a uh methodical fashion uh on the forum and it's kind of easy to track things um on super technical it can get a little lost in the weeds here because there's a lot of elements kind of with every decision, um, you know, up in the block size sounds simple, but it, it also becomes, uh, you know, having to do forks is, uh, or, or not forks, but consensus breaking changes is very hard uh, when you have exchanges. I've been on projects where because of the fork, they, uh, you know, if there's too low a volume, they just end up dropping you. So, um, you know, so we, we, we can't approach a, uh, you know, a consensus breaking change lightly uh, because there's a lot of parties involved, you know, in the ecosystem. And it's not as simple as, oh, yeah, we just switch it and we're done. So there's a lot of thought needs needs to go into all this, which means the best way to do this is, is uh, you know, potentially just uh, do it in the forum where we can methodically get down everything and we can address specific points in a very specific manner. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's, there are a lot of options. So there, there's there's no way that this is gonna you know prevent us from scaling either on the gateway side or on the um uh uh you know qos side or on the node side like yeah we we've got plenty of levers to pull it's just a matter of you know getting all the information together and then talking about it and then ultimately there's going to be some vote to the dow uh most likely for uh addressing this and um i mean i don't think this should be something where you know, I, I believe we could get this ironed out in a week uh, if we post all the information that we need on the forum and we, you know, kind of have a intentional discussion there. Yeah, sounds like that'd be a great thread for you to get started, Shane. And uh, of course, feel free to come post in uh, all of our channels links to it as well to make sure everybody's involved in the combo. Well, and that's why this, you know, that's what's valuable about this. Um, you know, this, uh, this platform, you know, having a, a call where we can all come together because obviously this is a, a, a big issue and, um, uh, it, you know, it's helpful to be able to get a lot of the major players all together on a call to kind of talk about some of these things. But I think the real solutioning will then happen when we're able to, uh, kind of address things in a particular way. So, yeah, so let's take the, um, you know, take the, uh, uh, I guess, excitement of, uh, you know, figuring out this issue uh, from here and let's bring it to the forum where we can come up with a solution. I think by next week we should be able to have something that, you know, we should be able to uh, have put before the DAO. Nice. At least I, I, will, uh, 
I will follow the conversation with great interest. I'm reminded sometimes of, of how uh, limited my knowledge of the, the inner guts of node running is when we get into some of these really fine points around uh, optimization architecture. So it's, uh, it's always an education for me to be part of these conversations. We do have one last minute announcement sliding in. I'm dropping a link in the uh, chat. The pocket scan team is working on uh, a new push for uh, GeoMesh. There were some, uh, um, I guess, a couple of issues reported uh, in the last uh, image that was pushed out. Um, and uh, so they are working on the, some image enhancement and better CLI support. And also uh, removing the need for uh, running as root, which is uh, generally not... Uh, not recommended <laughs> in most apps. So take a look at that uh, um, GitHub uh, uh, poll. Um, and uh, it looks like uh, it's currently under review, uh, not merged and built yet, uh, but seems to be in progress. Uh, if there's any concerns or uh, any other comments that need to be added to that, uh, y'all know how to use GitHub, I assume. We are coming up uh, close to the top of the hour. Any final yeah. topics or uh, points of interest? I have one comment, if I may. Uh, there's a discussion yeah, going on in the forum about uh, releasing AI models or other uh, stuff with the RTTM feature that now we have uh, in the Pockets V0. So I encourage you to please take a look at that. If you have comments, please do share that. I believe... <laughs> Enabling new types of chains, especially uh, generative AI chains, gonna make a big impact on the value of the pocket. So uh, your contribution, your ideas, uh, how do we launch this, go to market, all those things will be very valuable. Uh, it's gonna be a really big team effort, right? Uh, the node runners uh, will do their best to offer this uh, e economically, but also the uh, portal operators, uh, the gateways, they will need to find the uh, customers, they will need to articulate the value for it, ensure the uh, QoS. There is work ahead of us. And I just assume that we are over the hump just because we released the RTTM. The real work starts now. And of course, the tokenomics and economics around this. So yeah, your input is uh, requested, please. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I saw that thread and I found it super interesting. Uh, um, uh, Jeff isn't on the call today, but uh, that's where I have my R and D nodes at as a Q spider. And if if there's interest in like you know running Llama two or something like that um, as a you know a test among node runners, I would certainly be happy to contribute some of my uh, my server resources to to that effort. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll add there is, first, thanks for taking up the thread. Uh, I plan on jumping in myself uh, into the conversation. And, you know, as we're all recuperating from Meet Denver, and we will be sharing more details, um, you know, in the coming weeks, I did just want to share with the community that our plan for uh, enable <clears throat> enabling decentralized LM inference not only is pocket network. Uh, and kind of the gateways on top, like set up to drive this, you know, with the help of node runners and everyone else. Uh, we are ahead of, in my opinion, the entire industry in terms of being the first uh, real Web3 project to do this. And I am taking off a lot of discussions uh, with other projects and teams to put us on the map. So stay tuned. Uh, you know, let's you know, start doing the heavy lifting, but also get really, really, really pumped because uh, there's a lot to come uh, this year and now. I'll be on Twitter yelling about AI, so <laughs> let's go. Yeah, uh, also the, the socket that we applied for is starting this month. And uh, we plan as one of our first deliverables to to provide the community of node runners with guides and some software to deploy LLMs and diffusion models on the network. And we plan to have as soon as possible um, a mock-up uh, or a proof of concept version of 
a local net of pocket running both diffusion and language models. So you can test how to improve on how that would work on your backend of each node runner. So uh, it will, I think there is a work to do, but but it's closer than what we think, yeah. Any other uh, thoughts or additions on that? I'm honestly curious how the heck QoS for any kind of LLM or generative model will work, or if at all. So I think that's a really fair point, and it's something that I've been digging into a lot. Um, and so I'll, I'm going to drop my my layman's response in here. Um, so there, there already are um, vast sort of distributed uh, LLM models that are that are running. I think PyTorch is probably the most commonly known, uh, like privately distributed uh, LLM um, structure. But you know, we've got Llama two and and some other uh, um, decentralized AI models that are out there, um, and they're. Their selling point isn't really QoS as much as it is cost and control in that you don't have to trust a third-party provider of the LLM. You can generate an equivalent amount of compute in a distributed environment um, that you can expect some sort of reasonable objectivity from or, or at least control over where it is subjective. Um, but there's also some... some well, no, not an AI model. It's a, a distribution framework. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, there, there are some places where the math gets really interesting on uh, um, uh, mass training models uh, in that like you have a, a certain point where models uh, for training or data sets for training get big enough that distributing them or parallelizing them um, outperforms the lag that is caused by network transmission compared to you know a private uh, uh, GPU cycle or GPU dedicated GPU set. Um, and those are very, very big numbers for the most part. Um, but I think as as the the size of training model data sets gets bigger and bigger over time um there's an opportunity there for distributed parallelization to to turn the corner on where it makes sense as opposed to the cost of of dedicated gpu models and especially as we start to see more um maturity in the work that um Tao is doing or BitTensor is doing, the work that uh, uh, Jensen's doing, the work that Akash is doing. Um, efficiency is is something that gets better over time in technology. So uh, I, I do think that that is a reasonable bar to entry and that the questions that you're asking are, are you know, are, are legitimate as hell. Um, does it make sense to even do this this way? Is there enough of a benefit for that? Or can it compete with, with other methods? Um, but I just think we're early in the execution of that and we're just going to see it keep getting better. My opinion. Many, many, many typing comments. R regarding QoS, the, the question there, uh, Balut Kambasi has dropped uh, a link to to LM evaluation harness. That That's a, a perfect sample of how the industry is measuring those models. There are many, many ways to measure these models and and come up we coming up with a way to measure them that's not game app, that you can game it and so easily at least and also that provides the actual references that the industry needs is something that's not completely solved there are like many leaderboards out there for different aspects of a model that you could be measuring so uh, that's why we need to to do a little research on this. Um, implementing all those kind like the helm evaluation or the LM evaluation harness or or the instruct evaluation, there, there are many 
project like like those is is also part of our socket and and something that we will be trying to bridge to the pocket network. The, the idea is that we could say that the models that will be operating in our network have uh, can be compared to how they are publicized in Hugging Face, for example, where everyone downloads their models. And uh, also against the Helm chart where the GPT-4 model is also compared to the Lama 2 families and so on. So quality of service is, is a big, big topic in, in models. For language models, you, you do it one way. For image generation models, you do it another way. So it's not like uh, blockchain where QS can be, so it's, it's the same for everyone. So, uh, but we need to, or what we want to do is to explore this and, and make Pocket uh, legitimate in the AI world, not to just put a, a language model or a model of whatever up there and just ignore the how it is working. So we want to ensure that the users are given the, the metrics that they want to see when they look for a language model. And I think that we can do that in the pocket network. We have the, the tools to do that. Yeah, and Fred follows on uh, the, the answer to this is especially important when talking about LLMs. Uh, in addition to some new emergent objective metrics, there are many novel ways to measure QoS. They're effective to provide a service that works for the the end users. Uh, I I think it's it's important to note that you know QoS can be entirely different things, right? We we think in terms of latency and data accuracy frequently, but in LLM returns. While latency may be important to some degree, there's already an expectation of, you know, fairly low latency responses in heavier uh, uh, LLM applications. I mean, ChatGPT and BARD both have a noticeable delay in processing input the more complicated you get. Um, and I think that users who are used to sub-second load times on websites are also used to greater than second uh, response times on, on LLM responses. So we, there's a little bit more room to move there. And data accuracy isn't quite the same when there isn't necessarily an objective response, right? If we're looking at ETH values in a specific block, that there is a specific D, you know, 100% uh, ETH value that needs to be returned, but with LLMs, that's just not the case. And so um, there may be other more important uh, quality metrics, such as just, you know, quality of response, whatever that may be determined as, you know, um, whether or not your diffusion image return has uh, um, five fingers as opposed to six, right? Um, so that there's, that's definitely some questions that, that need to be answered. But that being said, I really want to affirm here that I, I think it's important that we have um, gadflies in this space, uh, a term that I've been called many times, um, you know, people who will ask hard questions and poke at things and, and uh, point out their perceived flaws. And um, kudos to you, Ian, for constantly asking hard questions like that. I think they're important to be asked. Can I just jump in just very quickly? Um, so this was a hot topic, obviously, last week. Um, we made sure that we uh, I know across the the whole team, um, both the guys at Grove and also in the foundation, um, made time to talk to a number of the different projects and experts in the field. Um, I know Ashansky actually was was presenting at some of these conferences. So um, the the TLDR that I got back, um, including from from the founders of Jensen, who Jinx mentioned, who've been building in the, in AI for a, a long time now. Um, is just to tread cautiously at this stage. Um, I know that's probably not what people want to hear. Um, but one of the things that we're going to suggest is that um, everybody contributes ideas to maybe a forum post that we will we will put uh, live so that it's it's in the open and everybody can add their thoughts um, to convene maybe a round table where we would quickly work through a lot of those questions with a view to putting together a kind of a light paper of, of sorts around what, what it is that is unique to our network that we can bring to this ecosystem. Um, it does seem as though there is something compelling that we can put forward. Um, it may not be exactly what we think it is today because there was, from some some places, there was some cold water poured in some of the ideas we were, we were kind of playing around with. 
Um, but that it does feel like the fact that we have an existing supply network distributed across many different markets definitely has a benefit in terms of being able to move quickly. Um, so time is off the essence. Um, it definitely has a benefit in terms of latency. Uh, latency is the key priority in the general use case um, for AI inference. Uh, we were, it, it was reinforced that if you start to get into AI meets blockchain, verification is much more important. I don't yet know exactly what that means or looks like. Um, but we do have some experts, including Bennett Jensen, who's happy to review those thoughts, provide feedback, critique, open doors. Um, they have said that they would be happy to, to be to test with us. Um, but that they could also open doors to a number of other projects that are that are sitting around waiting for someone to give them a workable solution to inference. Um, so we will create probably a post in the forum to invite people to to add thoughts. I know there's already been a lot of thoughts shared in different formats, but just try to gather them together. Um, and we will try to convene a a team a team call where we can talk about it in the open and kind of work through it quickly. Um, I don't know, Jinx, Ashansky, how that fits with with your points of view, but um, personally, I would urge caution until we have more clarity because I don't want to shoot our bolt too early and lose credibility for when we go out with something that feels a lot more grounded. My two cents. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, and if I can like buy donuts for the engineer Jensen office to have uh, one of those guys jump in and participate in in the thread and give their feedback as a an actual deck AI builder in the space, I will I will load them up on Duncan. Count on that. Uh, would love to see some of their input over in our space. So the offer from them was to review our initial thoughts that we need to do a little groundwork first to really ground out. What is our right to play? What is our right to win? What are our unique strengths and advantages? Uh, what do we understand of the opportunity that we're putting forward? And then they would give feedback. And probably at that point, I'd say, assuming that they're happy, they would be willing to kind of jump in and, and actively engage with the ideas. Um, but in the first instance, the, the suggestion was that we do some work first. Absolutely. Well, I'm not the one who's uh, smart enough to be generating the the core ideas of specific usage, but I will absolutely follow on behind uh, Ramiro and some of the other uh, big thinkers in the space. Uh, regarding the latency, um, it's going to be different for the project, right? You know, if you go to chat GPT, if you ask a question, you see how the tokens come one by one and not like a big blob because yeah. it's still computing them. And Pocket currently doesn't support such streaming uh, responses, right? And that's why, you know, it kind of precludes its use for, you know, chat kind of uh, interactive applications. So the uh, gateways and other uh, demand generating uh, people will need to find other batch-like applications for Pocket. Uh, hopefully, Shannon can solve that uh, problem. Maybe we'll have sockets and other types of RPC. But right now, interactive is a little bit less desirable on pocket. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying earlier as well. I mean, it's a, I, I do, of course, you know, anybody who's looking at a decentralized AI project or building in a decentralized AI project is going to be concerned about latency because you do have a, a greater latency in decentralized um, model inference than you do in like a dedicated model inference, right? That that's just like comes with the territory. So fastest response possible, definitely good. Uh, but you're absolutely right. I mean, it's I've been playing a bunch with the LLM tools that are available out there, and I mean, it's not like your standard web app. Latency is absolutely part of it, and I don't know at this point if, from a consumer perspective, there's much of a difference in perceived latency between. Uh, a three second response to a five second response, you know? You know? Exactly. Uh, this centralized doesn't add multiple seconds. You know, it adds uh, maybe 100 milliseconds. And if the response itself is already 10, 15, 20 seconds, it really doesn't matter. Decentralized has a lot to offer in terms of privacy, in terms of uh, access to different types of resources. Uh, you know, speed won't matter. It's not like the blockchain call. Uh, the quality is going to matter, the price is going to matter, uh, maybe other things. Latency maybe one notch down, especially now that we are not really geared up for interactive uh, chat use yet. 
you know, we can do everything, of course, but yet. Something I also want to call out here. <clears throat> so streaming responses, we're not going to get this in Moors, right? And that's one of many, many reasons why we're building Canon. And the other thing to note is this is going to be a very gradual process, right? The post chat GPT AI world is still very young. So even when we, even when we get an RPC app, even when we get update RTTM, uh, right, we're probably going to be in the piloting stages of this for many, many months and probably until Scanon comes out. And then over the next couple of years, that's where Pocket Network and the portal and uh, gateways on top of it can become prominent AI leaders in the space. Uh, I can tell you guys that from me, Denzel, I literally woke up to six messages today from the demand side to pilot this once it's ready. Um, there are other suppliers. There are, I would say, like several major suppliers interested in providing GPUs on the network. Uh, but this is going to be very gradual and just... Uh, like I would tell everyone to set expectations that this is gonna over the next year we'll see how it evolves, and like Ad said, carefully, uh, not just from an implementation perspective, but also from a expectation perspective. Yeah, it's uh, this is a great way to end the call, in my opinion. I love uh, um, leading into what's coming next, and and I'm enough of a, a nerd that I I really appreciate being a, able to be a part of all these conversations and watch how things develop. But we are at the top of the hour, a little past actually. I know people have other things uh, scheduled, so I will let you all go. We'll see you again uh, next week, same time, same channel, and uh, also watch the forum. That's where the big combos occur. So look to see you out there.